Hey everyone, it's Green Eyed Guide here, and today we're wrapping up our series, Are Energy Drinks Bad? This is a collaboration with none other than Caffeine Man. Caffeine Man, you want to get us started? Hmm? What? Oh, yeah, sure, why not? First off, thank you so much for having me on your channel. I really do appreciate it. You were a guest on my channel for part two of the Our Energy Drinks Bad For You series, the pre-workout edition. So I am more than happy to be a guest on your channel for part three, so thank you. So what's part three actually gonna be about? Part three is gonna be about the healthy energy drinks. Are they really all that healthy? Well, the answer is yes. That's why we're doing this video. We're gonna be going over the healthiest of the healthy energy drinks. Now, if you made it through parts one and parts two of the Our Energy Drinks Bad For You series, you're gonna know that there are plenty of energy drinks out there. And if you didn't watch those first two videos, why not? Who does that? Would you watch Matrix Revolutions first? Would you watch Return of the Jedi first? Would you watch Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade first? What? What's this crystal skull you're talking about? Crazy person, no such thing. So go watch the first two videos or, 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 or watch them after this, that's perfectly fine. You'll find them on my channel. Now listen people, this video right here is gonna be the video that you forward to each and every one of those ignorant people that say all energy drinks are bad. With the drinks that we discussed today, there is not a single bad thing in these energy drinks. We are gonna go over it all just to prove it. I never ever want to hear someone say all energy drinks are bad. I'm going to send this video to anyone who says they are just to prove them wrong. You know what? I'm actually going to search out all those YouTube. I've seen plenty of YouTube videos where there are doctors saying all energy drinks are bad for you and lots of other Karens out there. And I'm going to post this video and show them with all their opinionated opinions, bad mouth and energy drinks. Yes, if you're watching this, Caffeine Man and I want this video to be exhibit A when you're trying to convince someone that hashtag not all energy drinks are poison. So here's the plan. First, we'll go over different categories that these healthy energy drinks fall into. Second, we have to talk about sugar and sugar alcohols. And third, we'll look at some real energy drinks and their ingredients. So, Green Eyed Guide, what would you say actually defines an energy drink? Because some people are going to say that the drinks we're talking about are not energy drinks. I mean, would you consider caffeinated water an energy drink just because it has caffeine in it? The FDA doesn't have a legal definition for the term energy drink. So, in my world, the scientific research world, an energy drink meets three criteria. Number one, it has caffeine and at least one other ingredient known to increase energy. Two, it's marketed or labeled with the intent to give you energy. And three, the energy we're referring to here isn't calories. It's a boost in your mental stamina, your alertness, or anything else you're going to perceive as an energy boost or a brain boost. Caffeine Man, you keep way better tabs than I do on the newest energy drinks. Which different categories have you noticed for the healthy ones? Well, you have your sparkling waters such as Ugly, Highball, and even Hint Kicked, but there are several other categories, including tea categories. Some energy drinks have green tea as its base, others have black tea as its base, and some of them even have matcha in them, which is pretty much a green tea. Next, we have Yerba Mate. Yerba Mate is actually similar to tea. It just comes from a completely different plant. All tea comes from the Camellia sinensis plant, whereas Yerba Mate comes from the Yerba Mate plant. Now, in looking at how healthy each one of these energy drink categories is, I do have another question for you. Many websites that I have visited have said that green tea is the second healthiest drink on the planet, and what's number one? Water. Obviously, we need it to survive, but besides needing it to survive, is it really considered healthy? Doesn't green tea have more health benefits to it than water? Shouldn't it be number one? Well, if you think about it, to make tea, you need tea leaves and, wait for it, water. So water wins. But seriously, water is the healthiest because your body literally can't do anything without water. So to recap then, if someone is looking for a healthy energy drink, one that breaks the Red Bull monster stereotype, it's going to be in one of these three categories. One, a caffeinated water, two, tea-based, three, herba mate-based, and four, it has numerous healthy ingredients. Okay, Caffeine Man, now we have to talk about sugar. 
Caffeine is bitter. Speaking as a food scientist, there are four different strategies food scientists use when it comes to making a drink taste sweet. Number one, artificial sweeteners like Splenda or sucralose or aspartame or ACE-K. Two, natural sweeteners like monk fruit and stevia. Three, sugar alcohols like erythritol, sorbitol, xylitol. And four, real sugars like cane sugar, honey, agave syrup, high fructose corn syrup, etc. For the sake of this episode, let's assume that anything with artificial sweeteners is too controversial to be on the healthy ones list. We want to remove all possible objections someone might have to the healthy energy drinks that we're highlighting here in this episode. We can also probably assume that people aren't going to have a problem with an energy drink sweetened with natural sweeteners like monk fruit and stevia, which means we need to talk about real sugar and sugar alcohols. Caffeine Man, what is your experience with sugars and what do our viewers need to know? <laughs> I used to have a lot of experience with sugar, but I've definitely cut back. And over the last decade or so, we have moved in to a low carb world. And even over the last year or so, a lot of people that do the keto diet. With these diets becoming so popular, there has been a huge rise in people that think sugar is evil, but, but, but it's not. The way it should be termed is that excessive sugar is evil. I mean, one of the reasons why people say sugar is bad for you, but besides those on the keto diet, is because most things have too much sugar in them. So unless you're on a low carb diet or a keto diet, you don't really know what to look for to see what does and doesn't have high sugar in it, let alone the numbers related to it. Therefore, we need to look at what a healthy amount of sugar actually is. And once again, if you, uh, not Green Eye Guide, you, the viewer, leave a comment down below that's saying sugar's bad no matter what. Try and spread that rumor. You're just being ignorant because Green Eye Guide and I, we follow what science says, not your opinion. You're entitled to your opinion, and I appreciate that, but your opinion doesn't overrule science. Many medical websites, including the American Heart Association, say the maximum amount of sugar that you should have a day is 25 grams for a woman and 36 grams for a man. Do you know how they came up with those numbers? The math is based on how many calories people eat in a day and the assumption that 10% of all the calories you eat can come from sugar. In other words, these numbers, these recommendations are based on decades of research measuring correlation between how much sugar people eat and their risk of obesity, inflammation, cavities, high blood pressure, and diabetes type two. I, I did not know that. It's always good to know where this information comes from. Now, hypothetically speaking, let's say a drink has 12 grams of sugar in it. That's less than your daily intake for the safe sugar limits. Taking into consideration that you're gonna be having more sugar throughout your day in your regular diet, such as fruits and vegetables, is 12 grams of natural sugar considered healthy? Because some of these healthy drinks use that much. Yeah, so if you think of it like an allowance, let's say you get 36 grams of sugar or $36 a day, it's not a good idea to spend it all in one place. So an energy drink with 12 grams or less of added sugar seems like a healthy option. Now, if I recall correctly, there are healthy sugars and unhealthy sugars, but most people debate that, saying there's no such thing as a healthy sugar. But these would be the same people that eat healthy, eat lots of fruits and vegetables, which have healthy sugars in them. When I first started my channel, I heard that pure cane sugar is the healthier of the sugars. Not that it's healthy, but it's healthier than some of the more refined sugars. But as of recently, I've started to look more closely into it because sugar is a big topic. And it seems to be something about there's a difference between the fructose and glucose ratio. Some people might not like what I'm about to say here, but I got my bachelor's degree in biochemistry. So I hope most of you watching this believe me. Sugar is sugar is sugar. Once it's inside your body, the sugar molecule itself is going to do the same thing. But if the sugar molecule is the driver, it matters what kind of car that sugar is driving. This is what we call the food matrix. In terms of best to worst, scientifically, eating a whole apple is best, obviously. You're getting the sugar along with fiber and the other natural ingredients in the apple. Eating naturally occurring sugars is second. That's like when the drink has apple juice added to it to make it sweeter. 
and eating added sugar is worst. That's just plain agave syrup, high fructose corn syrup, organic sugar, brown sugar, molasses, even honey. All of those are added sugars, and that's probably the worst on our scale. But, but, I, I like honey. I guess the last thing that I want to ask about sugar is natural sugar, like let's say 10 grams of pure cane sugar, or, or even 9 grams from natural juices, healthier than sugar alcohols such as erythritol and xylitol? And how do sugar alcohols differ from natural sugar substitutes like stevia and monk fruit? I'm glad you asked. Sugar alcohols are becoming more and more popular because they're healthier than sugar. They're also less expensive for the drink manufacturer to use sugar alcohols compared to sweeteners like stevia and monk fruit, which are kind of expensive. Sugar gets 100% metabolized. Natural sweeteners like monk fruit and stevia are almost 0% metabolized, so zero calories. Sugar alcohols are only half metabolized, so you only get half the calories. Sugar alcohols are a great alternative to sugar because they don't affect our blood sugar levels like real sugar. They don't affect our glycemic index or our waistlines like real sugar. And they're less likely to give you cavities like real sugar. The only drawback is you can get a tummy ache if you've had too much sugar alcohol. This is more of a problem with sugar alcohols they put in gum like sorbitol and xylitol. You can have a, sh a lot of erythritol without any side effects, and that's the sugar alcohol I see used most in drinks, like energy drinks and other fruit juices. Well, since we want to get sugars out of the way, why don't we start talking about caffeinated water first? Even though it does have caffeine in it, it really isn't an energy drink based on what you've said. So waters like Avite, Water Joe, Hint Caffeinated Kick are just water with caffeine. Some of them do have flavors, but they're not energy drinks, so we can move on. Yeah, I've tried using caffeinated water to convince someone not all energy drinks are poison, but I lost the argument because their response was, well, that's not really an energy drink, so it doesn't count. I mean, I think it's a fair argument. And now that we have regular water out of the way, we can jump in to caffeinated sparkling water. Several companies do this, but in order to be considered an energy drink, there needs to be some added ingredients to fulfill the requirements. Drinks like Ugly and Highball do just that. Ugly and Highball have 160 milligrams of caffeine in them, but they also add all your B vitamins, guarana extract, ginseng extract, and natural flavors. And out of all the categories, it seems like these are the most simplistic, since it's mostly just water. But do you think it makes it healthier than the teas? Hmm, that's a tough one. I would say plain water is healthier than plain tea, but in this case, we're talking about water plus. The good news is these sparkling caffeinated waters you mentioned are definitely energy drinks that I would consider healthy. Well, I guess the next best option to talk about is going to be the tea-based drinks. It is the second healthiest drink on the planet. So why is it so healthy? Tea is loaded with antioxidants, and antioxidants protect your body from free radicals, and in turn, can help prevent chronic diseases. Some of these antioxidants are polyphenols, such as theoflavins, theorubogens, and catechins. Those funny named words are powerful antioxidants that help protect against numerous heart diseases and cancers. Basically, tea is the second healthiest drink on the planet for many reasons, and we can't even get into all of them in this video. So just take our word for it. And let me just point this out as a side note, a lot of drinks use natural caffeine in them. It's becoming very popular lately. And that natural caffeine is usually from green coffee beans or even green tea extract. But we're not really talking about that at this moment. We're talking specific teas. And some of those energy drinks include Tea Riot, Zest Tea, and Viable Energy Tea. Tea Riot and Zest Tea are both carbonated. Tea Riot uses green tea, natural flavors, has 160 milligrams of caffeine, 100 milligrams of theanine, shake it off, and also has B12 in it. It does have 14 grams of sugar in this 16 ounce can, but it's all from the natural juices used. Zest Tea has a black tea option and a green tea option. It also has 100 milligrams of L-theanine. Bad blood! Because, well, all, all tea has theanine in it because it's naturally in tea, but they do add extra theanine. The drink also has a bunch of B vitamins and uses pure cane sugar at 14 grams in its 12 ounce can. As for Vibal Tea, it's uncarbonated, and it's the closest thing to an iced tea you're gonna get, but it hits energy drink status because it's got 200 milligrams of caffeine in it, 200 milligrams of L-theanine, look what you made me do, plus ginseng as an adaptogen. It also uses honey and monk fruit for its sweeteners, and comes out to only six grams of sugar, 
for 16 ounces. Based on those three drinks alone, I would say it's a close race between Bible Tea and Tea Riot for the healthiest drink. What do you say? My vote is for Viable Tea. Less sugar, more caffeine. That's like a monster energy's worth of caffeine, but it's way more healthy. All right, so what about your Bamate? Now, scientifically speaking, Green Eyed Guy may know this better than I do, but I heard that yerba mate has more polyphenols than tea, which might actually make it better than green tea, but green tea has EGCG antioxidants as opposed to yerba mate's chlorogenic acid antioxidants. Polyphenols and I go way back. I actually did my master's thesis on polyphenols, and I'm kind of jaded about them, so unfortunately most of the research on polyphenol benefits is with lab rats or isolated cells. So it's hard to translate that into human health. The good news is it either helps you or it does nothing. So you can't lose. Green tea scores more points here than herba mate because herba mate is traditionally consumed really hot, like boiling hot. So it's actually associated with throat and mouth cancers because of the hot temperatures at which it's consumed. That's not the case today with Herba Mate in cold, refreshing drinks. So yeah, Herba Mate is a great natural source of caffeine. It's just that there's decades more research on green tea's benefits versus Herba Mate's benefits. Okay, well that's Yerba Mate itself. Let's take a look at these energy drinks. Guayaki has carbonated and non-carbonated versions of their Yerba Mate teas, and their stats are very similar to the energy teas. Natural juices, instead of tea, they're using Yerba Mate, pure cane sugar, and between pure cane sugar and the natural juices, you're getting about 28 to 33 grams of sugar, natural sugar. As for Yarchek, it's nearly identical to those stats, except it only has a carbonated version. So when I look at it, even though it uses pure cane sugar, which I used to think was a healthier sugar, these would be slightly less healthy than the teas based on what you said earlier? Yeah, that's a bit too much sugar for that to have the same healthy halo as some of the other energy drinks we've talked about today. Still, it's not as bad as the stereotypical energy drink, but we're looking for the best of the best here. And these drinks are just in the ballpark, but they're not home runs. So let's move on to some interesting ones. This one actually seems to be in a category all its own, and it's V8 plus energy. These drinks give you one combined serving of fruits and vegetables. So you're getting two ounces of vegetable juice and two ounces of fruit juice for a total of four ounces, which is one serving. The recommended servings per day is four and a half, but getting at least one serving in this small eight ounce drink pretty impressive. They are between 40 and 60 calories, zero fat, 50 to 65 milligrams of sodium, and around 10 to 15 carbs with 10 to 12 grams total sugars, but no added sugars. You get between 25 and 50 percent of your B vitamins, 10 percent vitamin C, and 2 percent potassium. It's giving you 80 milligrams of caffeine from green tea and black tea. So I mean it does sound pretty healthy, but, 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 although we may have a winner here, it does have a little bit of sucralose. Is it disqualified for using an artificial sweetener? We're going to subtract points. It pains me to say this, but I think the artificial sweeteners in V8 Energy might lose it some points. If we're trying to find the healthy energy drinks that no one can argue against, I don't think V8 is good. I don't think V8 is as good as some of the other drinks we've already talked about. And V8 is one of my favorites. I drink this one a lot for fatigue level two. I know we talked a lot about part two in this series about artificial sweeteners and how they're a lot safer than some people might think. But again, for you, dear viewer, we're setting the bar really, really high for these healthy options. So we have to find drinks that you can use to convince skeptics that not all energy drinks are bad. All right, now we come to a drink that gets kind of complicated. And there's even still one more after this one that gets even more complicated. But since we're discussing healthy energy drink ingredients, green tea is super healthy, yerba mate is very healthy, and green coffee beans are a healthy natural caffeine. So what about a drink like Marquis? Marquis uses all three ingredients, green tea, yerba mate, and green coffee beans for its base. It's got 100 milligrams of caffeine, all natural juices for flavor, 100% or more of your B vitamins, and for its natural sweetener, it uses nine grams of erythritol, as well as some stevia extract. <laughs> that right there, that, that, that sounds like a winner, health-wise. 
What do you think? I mean, if you have numerous ingredients that are super healthy, does that make it an extra super healthy drink? Yes, this one is definitely a winner health-wise. Nine grams of erythritol sounds kind of high to me. This isn't a safety issue at all. This is just me speaking as a food scientist and a product developer. I'd love to taste this one. Green tea, herba mate, and green coffee beans all have pretty distinct flavors, so it's hard for me to imagine them all together. But it's super healthy, no question. All right, now on to the most complicated one of them all. If extra healthy ingredients make a drink extra healthy, we now gotta look at Fit Aid. This drink has tons of ingredients and I'm about to list some of them right now and I'm even gonna put them up here on the screen for you. You got three BCAAs with leucine, isoleucine, and valine, plus some EAAs such as arginine and glutamine. There's also omega-3, CoQ10, glucosamine, quercetin, turmeric, turmeric? I always mess it up. Green tea extract, biotin, over 100% of your B vitamins. Plus why not add in a little vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, plus even some electrolytes like calcium, magnesium, and potassium. The regular Fit Aid uses blue agave nectar and stevia for a total of nine grams of sugar, but their Fit Aid Zero exchanges the blue agave nectar with monk fruit extract. Either way, both of these sound extremely, extremely healthy. Well, I think we have a winner here. This is the healthiest in terms of all those ingredients, the low sugar content, the natural sweeteners, and the caffeine content. Plus, Life Aid, the makers of Fit Aid and Focus Aid, get extra points from me because they have spoken out against energy drinks with a shish, with a lot of caffeine. I'm talking about the energy drinks with 300 milligrams or more of caffeine per can. Both Life Aid and myself are committed to showing people that there are such things as healthy energy drinks and most people don't need that much caffeine in a can. I mean, you make a very good point. It's the direction that I was leaning towards as well since they had the most beneficial ingredients. But I needed a biochemist pro just to confirm. So which one are the healthiest of the healthy, more ingredients or less? Ultimately, what we've done here is give you, dear viewer, a huge list of examples of healthy energy drinks. I think you could realistically point to any of these and maybe all of these next time you're talking to someone that thinks all energy drinks are bad. Or to quote my favorite headlines, dangerous concoctions of high caffeine and sugar. To close this out, if you, dear viewer, have a story of getting into an argument with an energy drink skeptic, Caffeine Man and I would love to hear it. You can share it with us in the comments below. And even if you are an energy drink skeptic and someone has shared this video with you, Caffeine Man and I would love to answer any questions you have about the drinks we talked about today or any other caffeine related questions you might have. Whoa, 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 where are you going? We got an energy drink giveaway to do. That's right, time for a giveaway, people. Glad you stayed to the end. I mean, it is one thing to say these drinks are healthy, but it's another for you to try them out for yourself just to see how healthy they are. So we're gonna give one lucky winner some of the drinks mentioned in this video, such as Fit Aid, Marquee, and Ugly. That's right, healthy energy drinks just for you. Please, 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 are you listening? Please only enter this if you want the healthy energy drinks because they do taste healthy in that healthy kind of way. These are not your typical energy drinks with lots of sucralose or even the ones with a decent amount of sugar in them. They're healthy. You've been warned. So all you gotta do is leave a comment down below saying Green Eyed Guide is the cutest biochemist you've ever seen and you'll be entered into the contest. Must be 18 or over to enter, no purchase necessary, one entry per person, no international shipping, United States only, no PO boxes. And this giveaway is in no way, shape, or form sponsored by YouTube. We are responsible for this giveaway and the contents in the box. One winner will be picked by an automated random comment picker one week from today and posted in a community post on both Green Eyed Guide's YouTube page as well as my YouTube page. You got 72 hours to respond. And if you don't, we're going to be picking another winner. So pay attention, people. You enter our contest. Check to see if you're a winner. There's only so much we can do. And good luck. 
And thank you, thank you, thank you to Green Eye Guide for helping me out with part two of my Our Energy Drink Bad For You series, as well as doing part three with me on your channel. You have added so much value to these videos that I am certain we are definitely gonna be getting the word out that not all energy drinks are bad for you. And it's not just my word for it. We got a biochemist who's talking about the science behind these drinks. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate your help in your numerous years of studying and researching this topic. And that is part three of the Our Energy Drinks Bad For You series. I hope you enjoyed all the content and information that we provide. I hope you've learned something and I hope that you can pass this information on to others to show them that not all energy drinks are bad for you. So in closing, have yourselves a great day or night. This was so much caffeine. <laughs> Ah, uh, so close. Uh, so much caffeine. This was so much fun, caffeine man. Thank you for setting up this collaboration. <laughs> almost done. Almost done. The name caffeine man is like a mouthful. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is is that a different YouTube? It's a different channel? YouTuber. Yeah. That, okay. Yes. That's a collaboration though. People love those. Oh, he's he's like wildly successful. It's amazing because he does a good job of looking at the science and the brands. It's so much easier when you're like in a classroom, I'm talking to like a real person. There's a running joke that I use the expression shit ton a lot in my videos. Mm -hmm. So any, t any chance I get to uh, tease that without actually saying it helps my friends that have kids and watch my stuff. Monetization. I know. <laughs> keep your kid friendly, keep your I know, friendly. I know, but I just love the S word, you know? Okay. A list of healthy, oh God. Ugh!